Hello, and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery Drag Gan. No, not a dragon. Drag your gan is a gan you can drag. Sort of. What is a gan, though? Well, dear nerds, GAN is short for Generative Adversarial Network. This is a type of neural network that pits a generator, like a money counterfeiter, against a discriminator, someone who can tell if it's authentic, and you can use it to make images. This is a very different process to something like Stable Diffusion, which adds random noise and then learns how to reverse that process. The basic concept of drag GAN isn't totally new, as we've all used things like GAN space, where we could discover various things to change with sliders, or more recently, the StyleGAN 3 visualizer, which featured rotation and transformation. However, as there has been lots of hype around drag GAN, let's take a look now, because the code has indeed finally been released. As usual for AI, you'll be best off using your Linux PC and an NVIDIA card. However, you could also use macOS, Colab, Docker, or even Microsoft Windows. As you can see, there are links to all of these various things here. You've got a web demo there, Hugging Face Space, Colab, a paper page. So do check out all those different icons. As you scroll down, you can see the requirements there, very similar to those of StyleGAN 3. Local installation is a breeze. Just crack open your Anaconda prompt and in just four commands, you'll be ready to go. First up, you'll need to clone the repository. There it is with git clone. Once it's downloaded, of course, you'll need to change directory. You can then create your environment from the file they provide there, conda env create minus f environment.yml. All you need to do then is just activate it. There you go. You are now ready to run some stuff. One thing to note is that the environment file uses the name StyleGAN3. This means if you already have a StyleGAN3 Anaconda environment, you may just wish to activate that and pip install minus r requirements.txt instead, and that will update your environment. Now that you're ready to run, you're also going to need a pickle. Uh, close, but the pickle we actually need here is one from StyleGAN3. I've actually tested with StyleGAN2 rotation and translation configurations. All of those worked fine, so no need to worry about which config you used to train your model. In case you've been living in a box for the past two years and don't know how to train your own StyleGAN3 model, I've already done a video on that. <laughs> you are most welcome. You can, of course, also download any of the pre-trained models just by using the download model script. Users of Microsoft Windows should remember that their choice of OS uses the .bat files with Linux using the normal shell scripts. While they do provide a script for startup, you will have to make that executable. So there, chmod plus x scripts gui.sha, and then you can just run it. Another option is to just start it normally. Their Python visualizer underscore drag is the name of the thing that we're going to run, and I'm passing it my own personal StarGAN3 pickle there. So let's fire this thing up. It only takes a few seconds to start. And there we go. The GUI is pretty simple. You can select your pickle at the top there. You can also just paste the full path into it there as well. If you like, you can select your seed. So we've got lots of different seeds going on there. Step size, how far it's going to go up each time. You can also, of course, reset everything. And you've got a choice of W or W+. Add point is what happens automatically. You can just go from there to there, that's fine. Reset obviously clears those off. You can also set a mask, so we've got a flexible area. That's the only area we want to change. Or you can do fixed area, which essentially deletes it there. Or reset mask gets rid of everything. You've also got a radius and a lambda there as well. Finally, at the bottom, you have a small section for saving. The basic process is pretty simple. It's just three steps. So you add a start point and you add a destination point. And optionally, you don't have to select a mask, but you can. So you could say, all right, I only want that area to change. And then you press the start button and it will eventually go through and the red dot will move towards the blue dot. Of course, you can add more than one point as well. So let's have that lip going up, that lip going down. We won't select a mask at all this time. So now when we do start, as you can see, the entire image is changing, but it is opening her mouth as the red dot moves towards the blue dot. 
Now, obviously, it depends on the sort of data that you've got in your data set. So um, let's see what happens, for example, if we do that I out to there. Now, what, what's actually going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Well, we can click Start and have a little look. As you can see, I haven't selected a mask here, so it is changing the whole image. And what we're getting here instead is a sort of rotation. So there, the head is going round to the left. Let's just stop it before it gets too crazy. Reset, and we can see there the head has sort of tilted. Let's have that eye going out that way. And if we click Start again, hopefully we should have the head slowly rotating around to the right. Now, as you can see there, a number of the features in the image have actually changed. Um, there's, there's a lot of differences there, and you might have noticed this before with things like GAN space, where, well, basically things are entangled. So if you change one aspect of the image, then various other aspects of the image will change at the same time. As another example, let's see what happens if I move her nose down to her chin, because that's a perfectly normal thing that anybody would want to do. That's actually not too bad. It's zooming in quite nicely and keeping most of the things the same. Now, of course, you can make some complete nightmares as well. So for example, let's try and have her nose going all the way down and we'll have that eye going up there and we'll have that one going that way. So now when we start, what on earth is going to happen to this? I don't know. It does. As you can see, it's having a good old go, but obviously that is a bit of a nightmare. Here's another example. So say I think, all right, I want to move her eyes in a little bit closer. And let's also have a look at what happens here. As you can see, we've got the entanglement going on a little bit there. So in order to move the eyes closer, what it's actually doing there is shrinking the entire image. Let's try and do that over there and that over there. But this time we're going to do it with a mask. So just try and move those eye areas. As you can see, in this case, it is really struggling to bring those eyes closer together. Probably something I haven't necessarily got in my data set. So if it doesn't know how to do it, it, it can't do it. There you go. That's DragGAN in a nutshell. Really easy to install, can make some rather cursed images, do have lots of fun, and do check out this next Nerdy Rodent video.